So in 1999, the Pokemon card sets, base set, jungle, and fossil were released to the English set. And now, about 25 years later in modern times, you still see YouTubers, TikTok streamers, and whatnot streamers opening up these boxes, these card packs, and it seems like they're opening them up like every day, every week, you know? It seems like it happens often. You know, you hop onto like a, a whatnot streamer stream, and you'll see that that one streamer has like five boxes of jungle, five boxes of fossil. You'll go watch a YouTuber, and a YouTuber will open up base set jungle and fossil together brand new boxes in one youtube video and you would think like yo these boxes are very very old you would think that they would make the videos last longer you know make like a series of videos not just open up three boxes in one video especially for cards that are over about to be 25 years old you know you would think that they would be hard to find and that it would be more precious right so why does it seem like in modern times that there is still like an endless supply of this product like why is this still coming in you would think that it would be like very rare and a very rare thing to see am i right well in order for you guys to understand this we have to go back to the 90s man you gotta understand that back in the 90s when pokemon red and blue were released those games blew up they blew up hard and then the pokemon anime was released and then pokemon figures toys and cards were all released like back in the 90s man like that's when they would start coming out and you know there's a lot of younger people out there that did not live through that time but if you are older you would understand like how it was to live back in that time so back in the 90s we didn't have any social media you know nobody was like sharing anything on Twitter you know that wasn't a thing back then internet was rarely used but Pokemon was still everywhere like everywhere you went Pokemon was everywhere you know you'll see it on commercials you know Burger King did like a promotion with Pokemon and it felt like a very magical time back then because it felt like everybody was into Pokemon you know it felt like a united people you know if you were a kid if you were a kid going to elementary and you were shy if you brought some of your Pokemon cards with you everybody's gonna want to be your friend because they want to see your Pokemon cards they want to trade with you and you know a shy kid like saying no he's surrounded by people and you're bonding over pokemon and it seemed like the playground was magical peaceful everybody was bonding over pokemon it was huge really huge and it's something you would have had to live through to understand it and as big as pokemon was back then there was a huge demand for products the printing company the one that printed the original pokemon cards wizards of the coast they had a lot of pressure to print pokemon cards because the demand was huge like they were being sold out everywhere and they had to like print all these cards to meet the demand because there were so many people buying there were so many kids buying parents buying for their kids you know people just buying all the stuff in bulk card shops it was everywhere man and there was a lot of pressure to meet that demand so they printed a lot man it was heavily printed and even people back then older people who saw this and saw like how big the hype was they decided to invest in it so they bought boxes of cards put it in the storage shed in their basement or whatever saying like yo this thing is huge years from now hopefully it goes up in price right that's always the goal right hopefully it goes up in price and yeah some of these investors you know they put the stuff away just to hold on to it and yeah so that's what happened back then so then we start to move into the early 2000s mid 2000s the kids that were into pokemon are now grown up they have grown out of it and now it's kind of like pokemon isn't cool anymore you know that's a kid thing it's a kid's thing so we start moving into that era where pokemon started to die out or where it was dying out. it was pretty much dead at that point and nobody was really interested anymore people were more into like dragon ball z you know naruto was starting to pick up Yu Yu, you know that that became like the thing pokemon it was in the past so like the early 2000s to like 2005 all the cards i'm not talking about the newer cards that were printed then like they were they were still printing cards they were still printing newer sets but the older cards from the wizards of the coast like base set jungle and fossil those cards as we headed into the early 2000s there was still a bunch of it like there was still a bunch of supply out in the world all right and it became junk like nobody was buying this stuff anymore like i said it died out no one was buying it anymore and they had all the supply they had too much supply and there was so much supply they didn't know what to do with it so you gotta think about it from three levels from the first level the investor if you invested in pokemon cards back then and you saw that the price went down you bought a box of cards for this much but now it died out it's kind of like i'm not gonna sell it for a loss but I'll probably give it to my kids or my grandkids one of these days. So I'll just put it in my storage shed, in my basement, in my attic. And maybe one day I'll pass it on to the kids because, you know, it's not worth anything no more. So I'm just going to put it away. I'm not going to sell it. Whatever. Stores and card shops. A lot of the card shops that closed down back then, all their supply went somewhere. You know, I went to like some warehouse, some storage shed that just got locked up. A lot of card shops did close down. And you got to think like what happened to all their supply? All that Pokemon supply. It went somewhere, right? And then you got 
shift thing to like the warehouse level, all right? The warehouse level is like where they had like stacks and pallets of all these cars, but nobody wanted it anymore. Like stores weren't buying it anymore and they have like pallets of this stuff. They had to put it in somewhere, right? They just stored it in some old warehouse that nobody's touching, right? So that's how you gotta think about it. At the very basic level, you gotta think if you're a card shop that was still open and you had a box of like fossil, Pokemon fossil cards out on display and nobody was buying it, like you would have like all 36 packs right there on the box and it would take you like, I don't know, like six months just for you to sell all 36 packs. And then you look in the back and you still have a pallet of that stuff. You gotta be like, you know what? Let's just keep a box of the cards here at the card shop and then the rest of the boxes, the rest of the cases, that whole palette, just put it in a storage shed. Nobody is interested in those cards. That's how you gotta think about it, right? In my opinion, the cards that were printed in the mid 2000s, like the newer sets, like the Ruby and Sapphire and the Diamond and Pro black and white era, like that era, like from like 2000 to like 2010, 2012, that era of cards, I think those are the cards that were more scarcely printed. Like there isn't that many of them because like I said, there wasn't really a demand for Pokemon during that time era. So the cards that were released during that time, they probably weren't printed that much. They were printing enough to get it to stores, but not like a whole lot, you know? So I think that era of cards, I think there's like less supply out in the world, right? So then we move into 2016. 2016, Pokemon Go comes out. And again, Pokemon blows up. People start playing Pokemon Go. People are talking with each other. People are becoming friends on the streets. People are bonding over Pokemon. And it becomes that magical time again where Pokemon is everywhere in the world. And it reminded me back then, like back in the 90s when I was a kid and people were buying normal Pokemon. So 2016, it blew up. People started having eyes on it. People started having an interest in it again. And you know, eventually after a few more years, 2020 happened, the lockdowns happened and then people really got into Pokemon. People started buying Pokemon cards in bulk, investing in Pokemon cards. And then the printers were turned back on, man. There was a huge demand and that huge demand had to be met. So the demand was back and Pokemon cards heavily printed back on the scene. And next thing you know, those warehouses, those storage sheds, those basements that people were storing their cards in, they started being discovered. You know, they started opening it up. You know, maybe you're some old guy saying like, yo, I have a warehouse with pallets full of base set jungle and fossil. I'm gonna go bring those back out and sell them and sell them for like a huge profit because the interest is back. And on the individual level, you know, people who invested in Pokemon back in the 90s, they're now older and they're discovering like, yo, I forgot that I had like this case of like base set Pokemon Pokemon cards in my basement. I've completely forgot about that. And they're bringing it back out, you know, starting to come back out. Like that supply that became junk back in the early 2000s is now very desirable, you know, starting to come back out. And yeah, there's still like a lot of supply out there. And even in modern times, like today, I still don't think we're gonna run out of those older cards. I still think that decades from now, yes, decades from now, people are still gonna be discovering those old Pokemon cards, those old sealed boxes and sealed cases. There's a lot of supply out there that hasn't been discovered yet. So I still think that Pokemon Basic, Jungle, and Fossil are still gonna be seen in future videos, in future streams. I still think there's plenty of supply left from back then, but it is eventually gonna run out. It's gonna have to run out. Like right now they're expensive, but when it becomes like very rare, like very rare to have like a sealed Basic, box that's when it's gonna blow up you know the more the more product that is opened and the less sealed product is gonna be out in the market right and now you're thinking about modern times in modern times pokemon cards are heavily printed so now you gotta think like how long are we gonna have to wait before we make a profit on these cards that we're investing in right well only time will tell man only time will tell but yeah anyway i just want to hop on and make this quick video you know let me know what you guys think let me know your thoughts and yeah just wanted to share this information with you guys and i'll talk to you guys in the next one right peace out